Zapraszam na panel dyskusyjny przy kieliszku wódki, ognisku i jedzeniu. Hi guys and welcome. Um, pretty funny story. I just looked because we have uh, February 2021 and I've just <laughs> I've just looked what which phone I've used in 1999 uh, 22 years ago and I didn't even think that that I'm getting older from year by year I'm older and older and <laughs> each year we're getting older and who knows and I remember my first cell phone I bought in 1992 and it was exactly with this one what you can see on a on a street Siemens S6 PCN and some people say Siemens, some say Siemens, but it doesn't matter. That's S6, and what's 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 funny? Uh, it doesn't it doesn't use uh, the big uh, SIM card. It uses a mini SIM card. Well, yeah, I know that now we use nano SIM cards, and some phones use eSIM but uh, that's a long evolution because it was a big uh, full-size sim card so one ff there was a two ff mini sim card which was used for example in that siemens then we have a micro three ff and then we have four ff nano but uh, at this moment we we'll, um, want to talk about that phone and uh, it was possible to buy it in a, it was 2G phone, second generation, a GSM phone, and it was possible to buy the phone in two versions for a 2G 900 megahertz, which was used in in Europe in some networks, and in uh, in version PCN it was with 180 1800 megahertz, which was and uh, it wasn't dual bands, just so it will buy a phone in, for a lower band or higher band. And it was before dual band networks. For example, in uh, Poland there was a uh, ERA, now uh, uh, T Mobile, and Plus. They used the uh, 900 uh, MHz network, and there was an idea, uh, idea now uh, Orange they used 1800 megahertz network <laughs> yeah um, pretty funny and uh, before it was that if you live in the, in the city it was better to use uh, 1800 megahertz network if you lived uh, outside it was better to use 900 because it was no higher band uh, coverage outside city in village or in towns so if you live in, in Poznan, uh, Warsaw, Gdansk, Szczecin, Krakow, it was better to use IDEA with 1800 1, MHz if you lived in uh, some Krosno or some small uh, cities, well, cities a small, small towns or village outside the city in the rural areas, it was better to use 900. And it was possible to make a call, receive a call. There was an address book on a SIM card, the second address book in a phone memory, and it was possible to receive and send SMS testing. There was no internet on the phone, and you can see the display, monochromatic display, and the battery with the capacity to use your phone for one, maybe two days uh, and we have a dedicated charger for that so it's, it wasn't possible to use any usb charger there was no usb at that moment the phone was invented in 1996 i bought them in 1999 and it was my first cell phone most uh, plans were uh, pay monthly plans pay as you go arrived much later with intelligent servers but it was the first phone and it was really great don't to use a public phones for the coins or cars just have your own phone for a first phone it was really great idea 
and I used this phone for a, such a long time and it was, was, it was heavy but it was really great for at that time. Then I bought a Motorola Ti uh, Time Port P7389. It was much more than a phone. You can see that the uh, buttons are, are much smaller. The phone is much smaller. And what was the best for that phone? It was three band, so it's possible to use 2G network on three bands on the 900 in the, as I told you in rural areas in the Europe, 1800 in the cities and also 1900 network. It was PCS network. Don't mistake with PCN. PCN is 1,800 and PCS is 1,900 network, which was used in the cities in the US at that time. And that one was the first phone in the normal price, which was possible to use in Europe and in the US. And in the menu, you could, you could change the band for dual band in the European standard or 1,900 in the US standard separated use in the United States. It was a pretty nice, the screen is much better, the battery also is uh, with a better capacity and it was the first, I can say, modern, modern uh, cell phone I had after that Siemens. And, but I had it for a, a short time, but it was really, really great. And also it had this dedicated charger, and there was no internet on this phone. Then I had a Nokia, and, sorry, and that Nokia uh, 3330. It was uh, three versions of the phone, 3310, 3330. 3330 and 3350 in the US. And I got a European version dual band with two European bands, 900 and 1800 band, Nokia 3330. As you can see, buttons are much smaller. It had dedicated uh, a charger. Uh, it also used a uh, 2G uh, mini SIM card. This place has a, a much bigger resolution than that one in Siemens S6, and also it was also it was really popular in uh, for teenagers in uh, in Poland and in also in European Union because it was possible to change uh, the body, to change the the taste, and to change um, so you put, you can put your cover out and put everything in a new color, a new design and it was you could buy for a few a few euros for example for five, six euros a new cover for your phone and it was really great. It was a dual band phone, it was automatically in the two European bands and it has a web uh, and edge. So it was possible uh, to use uh, the it, the it, uh, doesn't, it doesn't have a GPRS, there was no packet data, it was only Edge, which was something similar to a modem, but it was possible to call internet, and when you call the internet, it was possible to do some sh simple websites. Of course, only more formatting and very simple, but it was the first stage of internet in the phone. Before it wasn't possible, now it was something the first uh, and H CSD dial up internet in a phone, uh, pretty nice. It was also possible to change the battery like in the older phones, uh, really nice. And you could use phone for uh, two up to three days without charging, then you had to charge the phone. It was post popular in teenagers, but my problem favorite phone in the early 2000s was that Nokia uh, 6310i, a three-band uh, three uh, phone similar to a Motorola tri uh, tripod, but uh, at that moment it was three-band with automatic changing of the bands, so we can use in 2G uh, 800, 1800 and 1900 bands 
it wasn't possible to change on your own the case, but if you have a special screwdriver, it was pretty simple to put everything to a new uh, case. You just needed a special screwdriver. And what was the most important in that phone, the battery, you could use that phone up to two weeks, 14 days on a battery. If, if you put a, a, your phone on a desk, when it's charged to 100%, it was possible to don't do anything for two weeks through 14 days and the battery was full. Amazing. And it was a first phone with GPRS with a packet data transmission. It was possible to display some short web, uh, some simple websites on the phone using GPRS transmission. Of course, it was pretty expensive at that moment. I've used that phone from 2001 until 2003. And it was. It also has uh, uh, some silver uh, port, which is possible to connect your CR port in your computer to make some synchronization of your own address book. Of course, it's not like now that you connect to a USB and you then transfer gigabytes of data. Then it was only a kilobytes of data, but it was also a really good phone at the time. It was really wonderful in that time. Then I got the first uh, phone in with a color display. It was not uh, exactly to 6610, and as you can see, it's much smaller. Unfortunately, it was only dual band. It wasn't free band, but it has a pop port, which was a special port, which was possible to connect to a USB, not to a serial but to USB port, and. Uh, color display, a little more memory, and it, it didn't have a, a camera, but it was the first start. It was possible to connect outside camera to this phone, outside camera, and it, worked, uh, it was pretty nice at that moment. I used it for three years, from 2003 until 2006. That all uh, older phones didn't have uh, Google Maps, it wasn't possible, but for uh, calling and sending messages, it was pretty nice. It was also possible to use GPRS and those short, simple websites. And then uh, for a short time I got some flip-flop, it was a Nokia 6060. It wasn't a very really good phone, because it didn't have a display on a, on a flop. Um, but it was really small and stylish and I had it for a few months. Pretty nice device. The problem that it didn't have a USB port. All of that phones have the dedicated chargers. Then for a short time I've got a Motorola 3G. This was my first 3G phone. A flip-flop. Motorola, Motorola V3 3G. And I got it from a from Japan. It was possible to use in Europe only in 3G. It didn't support 2G. But it was really, really amazing uh, phone at the time. Look on that uh, keys, on those buttons. It's such thin, it's such small. It, it was amazing at that time to use that. I remember in 2008 when I went to Berlin to pass my SAT exam and I had in my pocket exactly that Motorola 3G. Amazing. And then this was a uh, Apple released a first iPhone and it was the only iPhone I had. It was iPhone 2G because I've decided that I want to try it and I bought iPhone 2G with 8 GB capacity. And in Europe it was possible only to buy that phone in the uh, in Europe in the UK and in US only US and UK. It wasn't possible to buy the phone in any, in any other area and uh, I bought this phone from a friend who was traveling from the US and to be able to activate that phone uh, using use, uh, an idea to use this European network, I had to jailbreak it. Because it was only possible to activate using items when you put AT&T SIM card. If you put other networks SIM card than AT&T, it was possible to activate it. So to, I had to jailbreak, to make a jailbreak to be able even to use that. 
but at the start it was a first fall with a touch screen. As a first fall with a touch screen, I think it was really amazing. It was uh, before we didn't have uh, headphones with a touch screen, headphones with uh, buttons. With color or monochromatic screens, it was a first phone with a, with a touch screen, and it was something really crazy at the moment. <laughs> the start of really, really great. I didn't have any modern iPhone, but that first was really, really wonderful at the moment. And then, this is my love with um, Blackberry. I had the two Blackberry phones. First was, as you can see, a Blackberry uh, with a keyboard. As you can see, it, it, it had a touch screen and keyboard. A really nice keyboard, it was a really good idea to, to fast write a message. You wanted to really fast write an email or an SMS, it was the best idea. Because you had a touch screen and a keyboard. The problem with BlackBerry was that to use internet on BlackBerry, it, you, it's, it's not that simple. Because for example, now with an Android or iPhone, you have to only activate internet access and some data packet and you can use internet on your phone. With BlackBerry, you should activate uh, uh, RIM, it's a uh, BlackBerry uh, BlackBerry B is a BAS, BlackBerry Internet Service, and only when I say BAS it was possible to use internet on BlackBerry phone. It was a special service and you had to pay for a special price for it, so you had to activate a normal internet and you had to activate BlackBerry Internet Service later. Now it's really, <laughs> what I can say, tell you, it's less popular than BlackBerry and now it's almost impossible to find BlackBerry internet service in a network. So it's almost, in, almost impossible to use that phone if you have a, even at home. Because you can only use it for at home, you can't use internet. And my second and last was BlackBerry 9900, also with a keyboard, bigger screen, bigger keyboard, a little different style. All that all uh, uh, primary phones they support 3G, that doesn't support 4G. But you also need to have a primary internet service to use internet on the library. And then I decided to uh, buy my first Samsung Android phone to look how Android was. I so know that how to work uh, in iOS in the in first iPhone, but I wanted to try Android to think is it good for me or not. So I decided to buy the first Samsung Galaxy Y Pro with keyboard. As you can see, there's a touch screen and keyboard. To know is it better to have a keyboard or a touch screen? So I didn't know. It was a start of Android, nobody knows how it works, and everyone was really crazy about that. And after that I decided that it's a good to have a phone with a touch screen that I don't need a keyboard because I don't write messages so much. Mostly I consume video and photos. And that was my first and last smartphone with Android. And that was Samsung Galaxy Trend uh, Vision 1. Really, really crazy. That's a photo of a dual version, but I had a version, I bought them in 2000, in 2013, in 2013 I bought this phone, and it was really nice, a uh, nice phone, I had to put a mini SIM card in there, it was possible to put a SD card, it wasn't really fast, of course, at that moment you could buy Samsung S3 or even S4, but for that moment it was really nice for a start with a touch screen and a Android phones to see how it was. It was possible to install third party software to root the phone really easily. You could do many things. It supports 3G with HSDPA 3.5G. As 3.5G is really nice. It was really nice for me in 2013. It Android 2.3 Gingerbread and with that Gingerbread it was pretty pretty nice. 
And of course, it was possible to use a Google Maps on that. So it was a first phone as it went with the Google Maps. It was possible to use many, many uh, interesting things. And now we use a phone mainly and mostly for internet access to for uh, websites for uh, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok. Not for net calling. So there's a future. This display was pretty small. It was a little over about four inches. So it was a really small display, but it was the start of that. And then I've I've got a, a Note Four. Uh, sorry, I've got from a, a, a friend a Note Four, and it was something new. When you change from an address, it went to a Note Four. You see, it's like going from a kindergarten phone to a business class. A big, almost six inches display. Really, really great. 4G internet, so we got 4G on that. It was possible to put a SIM card. You had to use a, net, a micro SIM, micro SIM. So not mini, but micro SIM, and you could use also SD card. And you have a special pen. The first version of Android on this phone I had was 4.4 KitKat. It was possible to upgrade to a 5.0 lollipop and the latest version was 6.0 marshmallow and i used it for a long time i used for a really long time the best thing you could change a battery in that phone uh, and you can you have a micro usb port you can have a really great camera in that the front camera the back camera so for the for the youtube purpose when i started my youtube channel i just bought that phone in 2015 and in 2015 it was a really something in 2015 it was really something for a, for a video production and from that for a short time i decided to buy samsung a6 from 2015 edition it, i bought it from 2016 as a one old phone what was the best the best thing it wasn't possible to change battery good thing is that it was a nano sim use nano sim and good was also sd card pretty nice camera not such great as in Note 4 or S5, but uh, still really nice. So the A6 has a good camera, but not as good. It was also nice to use uh, Navi on that. Uh, Google Maps was pretty good, the same as Note 4 on that A6 was pretty nice. And then I've changed to an S7 Edge because I moved from Germany to uh, London and I bought from a free network S7 Edge really nice 6.1 inch display sorry a 5.7 inch display uh, really fast uh, with a G uh, with a fourth uh, generation network so it's a 4G network and Wi-Fi AC uh, you should use uh, you can use a uh, nano SIM card. You can use also an SD card. It started with uh, Android 6 Marshmallow, but it was possible to upgrade it to Android 7 Nugget. So from a Nugget, it was really wonderful. With uh, 7 Nugget, really fast, really good camera, front rear. It looks pretty great. Uh, US micro USB port, really nice. And the biggest upgrade was to a S8 Plus. It's a major upgrade from a 7 Edge. Bigger screen from 5.7 is now it has 6.1 inch display. A super AMOLED. Uh, you use Nano SIM in that. You can use a SD card up to 256 gigabit of capacity, USB Type C, 4G network, Wi Fi NC, really nice phone and bad camera. It was really an amazing phone, and I had that phone from 2017 until 2020. 
three and a half years. Really wonderful phone. I can say bad things about that. And it arrived uh, with Android 7 Nugget and it was possible to upgrade up to Android 9 Pi. Really, really great phone. And my current phone, because I decided to change with 5G, because as you know, I love making YouTube videos, I record a lot of videos, and I've decided to buy some Xiaomi phone, because I didn't know is it a good idea to have a Xiaomi phone. And I talked with my friend uh, who lives in China, and she told me, can you look on Xiaomi phones and computers, that's very great. It's not like other uh, Chinese companies which are there with not such good shitty uh, devices that Xiaomi is pretty great even in Europe. Just buy a global version, you will be, it will be great. We have a four cameras on the back, one on the front. Uh, it's 5G compatible, uh, 120, 128 GB inside memory, 6 GB of RAM, very fast 8 core processor and Android 11 which was pretty pretty great you can put uh, two SIM cards or one uh, SIM card with SD card so you can choose between the SD card and second SIM card both of them works in the 5G uh, worldwide and it's pretty great of course you have USB type C and a big 6.67 point uh, inch display 6.6 inch 6.6 inch ips display it's pretty amazing i've put it in a case you have uh, a nfc so you can pay by phone which uh, of course was possible also in s8 plus or oh, and s7 edge but it wasn't possible in note in the note and my uh, previous phones then note 4 it wasn't possible it was possible in the 7 inch s8 plus and now in my in my 10 xiaomi to pay by phone really really great idea and i really love this phone because i can do everything it has usb type c i can connect to my uh, my uh, to my dji pocket to camera upgrade that i can connect to my bluetooth to a car i can do a lot of things and for a expensive but not very expensive phone is one of the best things I bought in 2020 year. That uh, phone and my Xiaomi computer that are two things I bought in previous year and I can really recommend it because it's really great. And I hope you like this video. Tell me which phone you had before and maybe you will tell me something different that uh, there are some other great things or you have something different because I really love technology and you can tell me and write a comment what you had before. Thanks for watching and see you soon. I ty cenzorze co za wiersz ten zapewne skażesz mnie na ciupę i żem się stał świntuchów herszten. Całujcie mnie wszyscy w dupę!